Nice. Nice. You got your MST3K live poster. Oh, you I got, see a picture of me back there. No, it's on the so TV. You. That is you oh. and Patton. Uh, that was the poster I got in the 2018 tour. Uh, yeah, very nice. Very nice little uh, thing on my wall. And you got the amazing Colossal Guide right there, too. I do, yes. This is all signed by the Rift Tracks guys who I met. Oh, right on. Yeah. Wow. So you yeah, kind of, you, you're familiar with the show. Oh, I'm a little yeah. bit familiar. <laughs> Thank you guys for giving, letting me uh, have your time today. As uh, anybody here who's watching this on YouTube knows, I'm uh, on joblo.com, the benefactor or the guy who runs Awfully Good Movies, which is also a uh, movie ripping program of sorts. And uh, Mr. Science Theater 3000 is pr more than likely my uh, biggest influence on the show. So it is an honor, of course, to have not only participated in bringing it back through its Kickstarter funded revival, which was on Netflix, but now is coming back on the Gizmoplex app through a second record breaking Kickstarter campaign. And of which I was very glad to be a part of, of course. So uh, would Thank you please Thank you. give it up for these guys, uh, Jonah Ray and Felicia Day. Uh, Jonah is of course the third of the four MST3K hosts who is returning from the show's last revival on Netflix alongside Emily Marsh and uh, Felicia Day, who alongside Patton Oswald plays the mad scientist Kinga Forrester, continuing her father's legacy of, of subjecting Jonah and uh, Emily and everyone else to the worst movies ever made. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, it's a real honor. And uh, 30 years or so, I can't believe that, you know, to think that you guys were once MST3K fans like myself. You found the funniest show on TV. You'll surely think it'll continue on for the rest of your lives. And then suddenly they cancel it. They smush it. Uh, not only once, but twice, but thrice. So, uh, <laughs> so surely it was an immense responsibility for you guys to take up the handle. So how has the response from the fans evolved over the past seven years that you guys have been doing this? I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Like the fact that it's two Kickstarters now that are record breaking is pretty phenomenal. And really? I've been in a lot of, I've, I participated in several of the biggest Kickstarters. Um, but really MST3 camp fans are um, a, 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 a type of their own. They really oh. are loyal, they're lifers. And the fact that we get to be playing in this world that I loved when I was 10 years old is just, it still blows my mind. I imagine. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I was scared because it's like because of how much I loved the show and having been on the other side of just fandom and being able to kind of just, you know, be outwardly upset or skeptical if something was going to, you know, be messed up or ruined or anything yeah, like sure. that. And just kind of like I was like, I, you know, I just had just abject terror leading into it from like when I was going to be announced. I, I couldn't sleep the night before when they were going to announce me. And like, really? I was, yeah. And, you know, and it's, and I, there was that thing too, where it's like, you know, I really represented, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, snarky, you know, not good hipster, you know, you know, sure. geeky, nerdy comedy guy. And like, I was like, I was like, there was a lot of it where I was like, I get it. I get why you're upset, but I'm going to do my <laughs> best to make it as good as I can. Cause it's my favorite show, you know? Yes, and so I was there on social media when the whole thing went down. So I was really uh, uh, impressed with how you handled yourself on that. Uh, and also this season was really different for you too, Jonah, because you're sharing hosting duties with Emily and you're mm -hmm. also directing uh, some of the episodes. How many of the episodes of the 13 or the 12 shorts that you guys, uh, that you directed? Uh, half of them. It was, uh, I split uh, directing duties with um, uh, one of our amazing writers and uh, he did a uh, Tom Servo on two of the tours. Uh, um, Tim, uh, Tim Ryder, uh, yes. who's just a, yeah, Tim is an incredibly funny, um, you know, uh, second city, uh, guy. And, um, just uh, he, we kind of split the duties of that. We both ran rooms, uh, writing rooms and then, you know, directed episodes. And it was, uh, it was, you know, it was super fun. It was, um, you know, it was wild because, but it was like a, like, a you know, Felicia and I, because of the way this new season was, we had a bit more time to play yeah. and a bit more time to kind of, you know, make sure like, because sometimes you're like you're reading stuff and you're like that's funny and then you're you know funny on the page not on the stage and then it just it needs a little space and we never really had that in the Netflix seasons and you know and really truly making it a collaborative thing kind of like you know how I feel it probably used to be in the old you know Comedy Central sci-fi days where you know we'd stop and everyone would kind of go like all right what's a what can we do to make this funnier to make this better and yeah, so like you know yeah. I can tell that the difference was really made on the ones that I've watched here personally. They've really made a big effort in like uh, collaborating with the do-it-yourself 
aesthetic that I'm used to with the show, and it's really wonderful to see. I, I'm really impressed. Yeah, yeah, it was cool to have the polish of the Netflix seasons, but it also it wasn't necessary in a sense. I, I agree, and sure. And I really love the homegrown, you know, I come from web video. Like the only reason I'm here is because I started making stuff in my garage with a SD camera. So at the end of the day, that's what that kind of vibe of MS23K was in. I know that it inspired me in oh, part yeah. to do what I do. And mm -hmm. and so getting back to that sort of like, we have a small stage, we only have a couple people here, mm -hmm. but we could totally change these words if they're not coming out of people's mouths, right? Oh, we have a really cool idea about a prop here. And just like being scrappy, it's just so much more authentic and so like much more the vibe of the show. And I really feel like people are going to love these episodes because yeah, it's channeling what we all loved about MS2 Decay. It was, it, it was spontaneous yes. and unpolished and just free for all. I yeah. Love it. Yeah. It's even like, it's, you know, having the ability, like when we were shooting uh, one of our prop you know, masters, uh, uh, F Woods was this incredible guy that just like, you know, when something would show up kind of broken, he'd be like, he's like, all right, I got, I'm going to figure this out. And then like, he would make it even better. And then, or like he said, he's like, also, I thought it'd be funny if this would happen to it too. We're like, yes, that's great. That's hilarious. It's like, you know, people just kind of, there was even one time where there was like some kind of, like we were in between takes on something. And I think it was the, uh, the DP or the sound guy that said like yeah. that chimed in with like a, a joke. And then we're like, yes, that's funny. You know, yeah. uh, like kind of like, having that like it's like hey we're all we're we're making a movie like you know that that yeah, feeling yeah. of just so let's all do it the thing you know like mickey rooney judy garland bringing it in a barn type of thing i get it yeah, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. the biggest change that must have been for you guys was not having any sets you're on green screens all the time how is that a big improvement over is that an improvement over from what you dealt with the last couple seasons uh, was it different how different was it i mean i it's it, it was it was necessary it was um the part you know, it didn't change much because it's like, you know, so much of it is already so presenty, you know, to the camera and whatnot. Um, uh, not, you know, really have to be there, be there uh, to really live in the, you know, character as it were. But sure. what um, what I didn't enjoy about that necessarily, whoa, uh, hello? I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. Oh, sorry. We're here. We're Something still here. No, we're sorry. Still here. No, no, we're still here. Okay. Add this time to uh, the speaker. Um, but with the part that, uh, that, uh, the part that um, I didn't like about it was the, like, it's like, I wanted to do like camera moves. Oh, like, you know, it's like, if there was like a song or something like that, and I wanted to be able to do camera moves, but like, because it's on green screen, you can only do those camera moves in post. Wow. And it, and, it, and like, um, there's like, you know, there's, uh, that was the one I think downside to green screen, but it made everything else just run smooth. You know. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's a different kind of process. As an actor, you're just like, "What am I looking at?" And you're just like, "Okay, there's a dot. I'll look in that direction." <laughs> right. But you know, again, I think being a little janky is like fun and part of MST3K's charm. And so, I, agree. Yes. I feel like yeah. some of some of the aspects of just making it work really enhance the show. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I agree that it makes a huge difference in the show. And I imagine it also is a huge help to know that you've got, you know, not just Joel uh, operating as the creator, the producer, but also uh, Jonah and Joel were at the Rift Tracks reunion show, which is fantastic. You, of course, have uh, Mary Jo Peel coming back as Pearl Forcer, I imagine. Yeah, and she wrote on some episodes as well. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, how much is it important to you to have those guys embrace uh, what you did? Because I know Jonah also got a nice show from uh, message from Mike, I believe. On your yeah. Oh, wow, you yeah. did? Yeah, yes, that one, that one was that one was huge, you know, because I'd I'd been friends already through comedy with Frank, so I know Frank and I were okay, um, and just through like cons and stuff like that, like you know, Bill and Kevin, you know, kind of uh, embraced me, and then like um having you know Trace on my other show in America, like he was like you know like we kind of became buzzed, but there was you know it was it was a funny show by the way. Funny show. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you know, Mike was you know like uh. I was just like, I didn't know how he felt about me. I didn't know how he felt about like, you know, anything. And like, um, you know, he can have whatever take he wants on the new episodes of the show in general. Uh, that's fine by me. But like, I was just kind of like, as like a, as you know, a performer, a comedy performer with dad issues. Like I really wanted, you know, Mike to kind of just give me a, sure. and like, he just out of nowhere just gave me an email and yeah. like, it was just like, Hey man, 
uh, really great work. Congratulations. It looks really like, it's like, uh, That's cool. very funny. And I was just like, and I remember just when I saw the uh, email, I was just like, I, I was like, what the, and my wife, Tiana, you know, Dr. Donna St. Five, she's like, what's up? I was like, Mike emailed me. And she's like, you've been waiting for this. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I've been yeah. myself. He is a very, very nice man. Of course he's uh, reticent in his ways, but that's why we love him. You know, yes. Yeah. A, yeah. Awesome True guy. Midwesterner. <laughs> True Midwesterner. If I yeah. saw one. So uh, <laughs> how, how uh, it's to close things out. How do you guys feel knowing that the legacy of your new show is not just going to be remembered as, Oh, there was that failed MST3K reboot that they tried a couple years back. Don't worry about it. Uh, but now it's like, people really do love the show and are starting to embrace a lot of the lingo and the quotes from these episodes. So how do you guys feel knowing that your legacy from the new show is going to be secure alongside that, the old show you guys used to love. It feels great. I never want to be the one like, ew. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that would feel good. Especially for somebody, you know, something like, I think it's pretty clear Jonah and I have a personal investment in MST3K and we would have watched the reboot if we weren't in it, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that uh, I, I'm, I'm honored. I wrote on a bunch of the episodes too. My brother wrote with me on a couple and it was Whoa, a dream nice. come true to actually have my words on screen. Last season, there was a, a sketch that I actually wrote <laughs> um that i the words came out of tom's and crow's mouth and i started crying when i was on set yeah. i'm just like oh. this is the coolest thing ever That's so amazing. i mean yeah i'm just honored to be a part of it i'm honored the fans have embraced us and i really hope this season um gets back to the roots of what mst3k means to people and i hope they embrace the new crew just as much as they've grown to embrace jonah and me and uh, Patton and everybody yeah um, yeah. Uh, so, so I guess it looks like we got one more question uh, available for you guys, three minutes. So uh, I know that since you're fellow MST3K fans, as well as cast members, you know that a lot of people who get their movies mocked on the show don't take it well. Uh, Joe Don Baker, I remember the famous saying that he had after Mitchell was that if he saw any of those guys in the street, he'd whip their asses. But I think they used was, my name. Yeah, <laughs> that was probably my joke. Uh, that was probably <laughs> their joke. Uh, uh, so yeah. it, it was just probably a joke. So anyway, anyway, mm -hmm. have you guys gotten the same reactions for any of the people who ripped these movies? Has uh, Ronald McDonald from Mac and Me gotten uh, any people uh, 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 you guys or something like that? We've gotten I death threats not. from Mac. Mac has uh oh my gosh and uh, oh he just see, he just like we can just hear him in the distance whistling through his <laughs> yes. weird hands um the, I was doing a um I'm trying to remember which con it was uh but I was doing a con and um and I was taking questions uh, for a Q&A and some lady she's like have you ever met any of the people that you've done movies for and I was, I was like I haven't you know I don't I don't you know some of these are old I haven't really run into these people who knows if they even know and she's like uh, she's like, well, what about anyone from Atlantic Rim? And I was just like, I was like, oh man, I don't think I. And then I realized it was a lady from Atlantic Rim that we oh, called wow. Dr. Third, and she what? was like, that's oh amazing. my god, I'm so sorry. And, oh my and, gosh, and, that's uh, so cool. So she was super sweet about it. You know, she's an she's an actor, and she's oh. like, she's like, yeah, I took a gig, and it wasn't a good movie. Like, uh, and that's fine. But I, you know, I got the gig, and I'm like, yeah, I've done the same thing. As an actor, you don't. You know, you can be choosy, or you can work. Um, yeah, exactly. You just do <laughs> what pays the health insurance and gets you on a on a set because it's yeah, just yeah. fun to work. <laughs> exactly. And then, so um, like uh, months and months later, I was doing Pensacon, and me and um, uh, you know a couple other people were doing an improv, imp like an improv show, and Bill uh, Corbett was doing like monologues, so he would tell stories, and then we would all improvise off of it. And one of the uh, improvisers was Jackie Moore from Atlantic Rim and we like really she's a hilarious improviser and okay. it was pretty um, wild and I kept on making Atlantic Rim jokes and it was great sure all right yeah. well that's amazing that you guys are getting such a great reception uh from all the fans myself included I hope uh the next couple episodes you come up with uh at, if they're going public here really soon will be amazingly rece received with the MST3K fan base and I imagine I hope so we got Munchy coming up soon so yeah, we'll see that's what I'm looking forward to I remember seeing that in the video store as a child the worst thing I've ever <laughs> written on it just know that when you hear every riff the writers were as tortured as the people on screen oh yeah. that's wonderful to hear because that's that's what you know you've really made it on missy science theater when you're that miserable yeah, yeah. there was like there's even like even when we were put like recording the riffs there was like a couple moments that snuck in there of just like something happening in the movie and there's no time for a riff but here what it was going like Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> just disdain disdain for the movie <laughs> 
Yeah, Kevin Murphy has told me about that himself. He let out a big f bomb after he watched that uh, Baby Ghost movie for the. Rest oh, of the yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. But anyway, uh, uh, yes, thank you guys so much for your time and uh, talking with me. Of course, Mr. Science Theater 3000 is going public uh, when? The first three episodes? Uh, May 4th. Six, uh, May 6th. May 6th. May so the first three episodes will be released May 6th, 7th, and 8th. And then yes. every two weeks after that, there'll be there's either a, a short, short, a live yeah. stream, a new episode. And there's 13 episodes, 12 shorts. Tons of live streams planned. So the Gizmoplex really is a community hub and hopefully people will participate because it's really, really innovative and cool. Yeah, cool. and if you don't want to join, you can still VOD these episodes. And yeah, just you can. You can just so like, pop in and pay for one. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah like just like how like the Mads have been doing it, like with just the kind of pay-per-view events and whatnot. So it's uh, it's very exciting. And of course, Joel's back. Joel Robinson, yes. you know. You know, yeah, it's, so it's and this new crew is hilarious too. Like, like it's oh, like yes, yeah. they really are. I'm really impressed yeah. with the, what you guys. I can't wait to so see far. them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can't wait to see them. Uh, uh, I hope that everybody out there who is a fellow fsu 3 k fan gives these a shot because they're really incredible work. And I hope you guys run for many more seasons to come. So again, thank you, Jonah Ray Rodriguez and Felicia Day of Mr. Science Theater 3000. Thank you. This is Jesse Shea for JoeBlow.com, and uh, we will be back with Joel and Emily here in a bit. Thanks again, guys. It was a real pleasure. Take Thanks, care. Jesse. Yeah, nice right. to meet you. Yeah, see you around. Nice to meet you, Jesse. Hold on to your box. Oh, we got movie stars! Mystery Science Theater 3000 is coming back again. Movie in the hole. This season, MST3K features 13 brand new episodes, including some of the cheesiest movies ever. Vin Diesel in the slow and the steady. And there is where we'll put the sick flat screen. Oh, it's like a Hershey kiss in a suit. But wait, there's more. The new season isn't on television or Netflix. It's available exclusively on a brand new platform called the Gizmoplex, built just for MST3K. A bright and shining beacon to the worst that cinema has to offer. <laughs> it all starts May 6th, so reserve your season pass now and get new MST3K every other week, all year long. Well, at this point, I'm all out of dignity, so let's go. <laughs> Success! Find out more only at the Gizmoplex at mst3k.com slash season 13.